Hello, this is David Nathan, and I'm sharing today about my introduction to the music of Aretha Franklin, whose music I've been listening to for, well, I guess we could say about 47 or 48 years. Um, I first heard her music actually on a beach. She wasn't on the beach, but uh, someone brought a record player to an outing that I went to. Uh, the outing was put on by the Dion Warwick Shirelles Scepter One Appreciation Society. I don't know if it was called all that at the time. I think it might have just been called the Dion Warwick Shirelles Fan Club. But anyway, um, someone brought a record player and portable record player and we were on the beach and they played uh, a track from an album called uh, Running Out of Fools and I was just blown away. The song actually was Walk On By which was my favorite song uh, actually at the time and I uh, first heard the song of course by Dion and um, I heard it and I thought, oh, who is that? Who is that? So the person whose album it was said, oh that's Aretha Franklin. Of course, at that time, we didn't know that in Britain that her name was pronounced Aretha because she actually had had almost no releases in the UK. This is actually the album, Running Out of Fools. There you go. Hello, hello. And um, after I heard her music, I wanted to find out as much as I could about her. And at the time, uh, I was working in a record shop in London uh, to earn some pocket money. I was still in school. And uh, I remember that I asked the manager of the record shop I was working, and he said, well, there is actually an album coming out, an LP, you didn't call it an album, coming out by her, um, and it was called Yeah. Let me see if I can find the cover of Yeah. And Yeah was, uh, let's, yes, I'm sure it's here, right here it is, Yeah. And Yeah, says Yeah. Yeah was, um, let me make it more clear. Is it, oh. Just trying to figure out how to do videos here, guys. Okay, yeah. Okay, and yeah was uh, an album that she recorded. Uh, as it turned out later on, decades later, when uh, Sony uh, reissued all of her Columbia recordings, we found out that it actually wasn't really live. It was done in a studio in New York, uh, and then they added in the live sounds to make it appear like it was live. But it was done with a quartet. Uh, that included a very famous guitar player, Kenny Burrell. And um, amazing album. I learned every single song on there. Uh, mostly uh, standards, uh, Muddy Water, uh, which I actually subsequently have uh, performed myself in shows that I do. Uh, anyway, I digress. Back to, yeah, so I got the album. I loved it. And then I wanted to find out as much as I could about Aretha and get as many uh, of her albums as possible. At that time, none of the rest of her albums were released in England. And um, shortly after I left that job and I went to work for a shop in uh, London called Musicland, which is around the corner from where I lived. And uh, they, one of the things they did was import albums. So I was finally able to get Running Out of Fools. And then I got all these other ones, these amazing Columbia albums. There you go. Aretha, her first album. Aretha, yeah. Then uh, the electrifying Aretha Franklin. I am going to get the hang of this. <laughs> then tender moving swinging. Then laughing on the outside. And then unforgettable, a tribute to Dinah Washington. Yeah, and then I had all those. It was absolutely incredible to get all those albums. And I really bathed myself, you could say, in the music of Aretha. And I will be talking at length about some of those albums in future videos. Because I had no idea at that time that I would go on to get to know Aretha. Um, in fact, what I used to do was I used to send uh, letters to her care of her father's church and I didn't know where it was in Detroit I knew it was in Detroit so I sent these letters and it would say uh, Miss Aretha Franklin care of Reverend C.L. Franklin New Bethel Baptist Church Detroit Michigan USA and I just hoped she would get them now, I was able to get a, a publicity uh, photograph of her and that had on the bottom a uh, phone number that began with LO I think and it had an address, 1721 Field Street. 
and obviously a manager name who at the time was Ted White who at the time was also married to Aretha and uh, my first contact with her uh, and this is during her Columbia she had actually left Columbia um, was in December of 1966 when I was working at a shop called Soul City in London that I co-owned I co-owned that with uh, Dave Godin who had started the Town Motown Appreciation Society and a friend of his Robert Blackmore we started Soul City together and uh, we had the shop in Deptford in South London uh, and Soul City was famous because it only sold American R&B and so anything else at all and of course we didn't have any money really I mean <laughs> we decided for our Christmas bonuses that um, we would each call an American artist and Dave Godin chose Big May Bell I don't remember who Robert chose but I cho chose Aretha and I remember vividly standing in our office above the shop and calling through the operator because back in 1965 you couldn't actually 1966 rather you couldn't um, you couldn't just dial the numbers anyway um, so went through the operator and he put me through to the number on the publicity shot and uh, Ted White answered the phone and I said, well, my name's David, I'm calling from England, I'd like to speak to Miss Aretha Franklin. And he said, okay, hold on a moment. And he said, Aretha, phone! And she came to the phone, and I said, oh, my name's David. And now, what I forgot to say was that in that time period, she had somehow got one or two of my letters, and she had sent me back a letter, which really was amazing with a photograph in it and uh, unfortunately through time and moving multiple times since 1965 66 because I don't have it anymore in fact I got the letter in 1966 I remember and uh, she said she'd never been to England and she was hoping she would get there one day and I was hoping she would too and uh, so when I called her in December of 1966 I said oh I'm the person who wrote to you and I'm just going to wish you a Merry Christmas. And she said, famous words. She said, well, I just signed a new contract with Atlantic Records. And I said, yeah, I know. I saw it in Billboard. And she said, I'm really excited about, you know, doing my first album. I'm going to start working on it in January, which was then only a few weeks away. And, of course, no one knew, neither she nor I knew, that that first sessions that she did with Atlantic in, in uh, January and February of 1967 would actually be the beginning of her becoming who she has subsequently become, which is the undisputed Queen of Soul, and the beginning of an internationally recognized career, uh, multiple uh, awards, of course, and she is a global icon. But we didn't know that in 1966 when we had spoke, and um, I want to speak uh, in subsequent videos about uh, her music on Columbia, which I think uh, was very much uh, maligned by critics after her success on Atlantic, people went back and said, oh, you know, those records were schmaltzy or they weren't, you know, she was drowned in strings or, you know, she did too many pop songs. And I want to talk uh, about some of those albums because of how important they were to me and be really looking at them from a, a different perspective. I mean, I will say this. Uh, I consider that the work she did on Columbia is uh, really indicative of how great Aretha is is as an interpreter stylist she her ability to interpret lyrics is almost peerless i mean just amazing and you have to remember that aretha franklin was 18 years old when she first started recording phenomenal to be able to create interpretations of songs from shows uh some standards and really add her own uh, her own stamp to each one but we'll be talking more about that in subsequent videos I wanted this to be like an introduction uh, uh, to the videos that I am going to do about Aretha and um, and just talk at each about each segment of her recording career and we will start with Columbia which will be the next video I'll do but for now uh, this is my introduction this is David Nathan of soulmusic.com uh, just giving you a taste of what to expect in the subsequent videos I'll be doing of course, I'd love to be able to play the music, but we know there are copyright rules and regulations, which means I can't uh, do
do that, unfortunately. <laughs> uh, I don't know if there's a way of playing the music in the background. I might have to figure that out for the subsequent videos, um, but I'm not doing it for this one. All right, uh, well, do stay tuned for subsequent videos on uh, Aretha, and then I'll be doing some uh, videos on other people, Dion, Dion Warwick, and Nina Simone, the music of each of those women, and some uh, other chats on uh, all the people that I've met, or as many of the people I've met through the years as a music journalist. All right, well, it's now, what time? It's nine o'clock in London on a Sunday evening, so I'm gonna sign off, and uh, thank you for watching. I do have a little PS, which is, uh, what I didn't say is that the day that I got the letter from Aretha, uh, actually, that was a Saturday morning, and my dad, who worked in the fish and chip shop, he actually was the manager of the fish and chip shop, that we lived above, um, called up and said, David, package from America, letter from America. And uh, at that time, just a little funny PS, I was listening to Aretha. I was listening to the album Unforgettable, tribute to Dinah Washington. I just finished doing my attempt at singing with her, Nobody Knows the Way I Feel This Morning, which was very intense, but I was determined to sing along, and uh, I did my best, and uh, of course, uh, that, you know, within the few minutes, I was looking at a photograph of Aretha from her, signed by her, and it was kind of magical, so I just want to add that part. I'm sorry I didn't insert it in the video, uh, where it belongs, but you know, I'm still getting used to make, doing videos. So bear with me guys, bear with me, guys and gals. Okay. All right.